a pleasant day, my dear grade 11 students. Welcome to Sir Robert's Lectures on YouTube. This is Sir Robert, your reading and writing teacher. And this week, we are to proceed with our Module 4, Lesson 2, Purposeful Writing in the Disciplines and Four Professions. Let's get it on with our objectives this week. Number 1. Explain how a writer's purpose is an important consideration in any type of writing. Number two, at the end of this session, you are to identify the features of each type of academic writing. And finally, you are to distinguish the differences and similarities of each type of academic writing. Are you ready? So here are the keys to effective academic and professional writing. Remember that our subject is reading and writing. And this time, we are on the writing stage. And here are the keys to effective academic and professional writing. Number one, the purpose. So it's the writer's intention. It's either you are writing to inform everyone about the topic you are to entertain or to persuade so that's the purpose okay next the audience which is one of the important elements of academic and professional writing so to whom you are writing the work for who will read your work what do you intend to uh, deliver to the audience who are your selected audiences so that's an important uh, element in professional and academic writing next is the tone okay the tone is the way the author expresses his attitude through his writing academic writing for example use the third person pronoun rule Remember that we do not use he, she, or I in academic writing. So we seldom use these pronouns. We follow the third person pronoun rule in academic writing. Alright, so take note, my dear grade 11, that uh, here are the keys to effective academic and professional writing. Number one, you have to find out the purpose why you're writing such text next to whom you're writing the text for so this are referring to the audience and finally the tone okay. so the tone serves as uh, another important element on effective academic and professional writing next I have a question here for you. Why is it important to identify first your purpose before starting to write? Remember class that the purpose serves as the compass of the writer. For example, my purpose in writing such article is to entertain. My purpose is to persuade them to believe in my opinion. When you write something, take note that there is always a purpose. And your purpose will point you towards the goal of your writing. The needs to take a direction of your writing. Okay? So here are the different texts across the disciplines. We have number one the article critic number two position paper number three project proposal and finally the literature review so these are different texts across disciplines all right so how do you write different texts across uh, disciplines number one an article critic or critical response paper is a thorough analysis of an article 
a book or a research paper. For example, we have here family and friends in a newspaper, Sun Star. So it's an article critique about uh, a book or a research paper. Okay, it's a thorough analysis. We call it also critical response papers. So see more examples on the web about an article critique. All right. So for example, here is a critical response about the Sunstar article by Nina Studio. Okay, so you have to write, of course, using IBC format. So first, an introduction contains the overview of the article by stating the title of the book or the article, name of the author, and place of publication, such as this example. In the article, Family and Friends, published on March 19, 2016, issue of Sandstar Daily Davao, Nina Isku Studio, the writer points out how modernization, both positively and negatively, affect family friendships and relationships. So these are uh, examples, okay? I'm sharing you examples of uh, the different texts. And uh, this one is a critical response paper or a critique paper. So you are to write this uh, on some uh, points of your life. So next, an introduction is followed by the summary of the content, wherein this is an explanation of the important points that the author makes and evidences used to support the points. For example, take this example. Okay, this is the summary of the content of the article uh, by uh, Nina Studio on Sandstar. And uh, this serves as the summary of the content of the critical response paper uh, being uh, written about family and friends. And finally, is an analysis or evaluation of the text. Take note that you begin with the introduction followed by the summary of the content of the article, and finally, the analysis or the evaluation of the text. So in this part of the critique, you will discuss the writer's style of writing. Okay? You'll discuss, is it descriptive, persuasive, or narrative? So you begin by detailing how the writer's style is uh, being... Uh, use in the article, like uh, this example, all right? So this is a critical response paper. And letter B, you need to disagree, of course, about uh, the points given in the article. And uh, support your points, of course, by citing, paraphrasing, or summarizing ideas on the paper that supports your argument. Okay, this is a critical response paper, everybody. And letter C. Okay, evaluate the usefulness of the article. How is it useful to the community, to the society? So, this is, I believe, is the final part of your uh, critique paper. To evaluate if it's useful in the society ang content ka, a research or a critical response paper, right? And uh, you'll end with a conclusion, okay? It's a summary of argument or general opinion, such as uh, this one. People should be vigilant about the effects of new social realities brought about by modernism in general and technology in Particular. So this is such an amazing uh, critical response paper wherein uh, you begin with an introduction followed by the summary of the content, the evaluation or analysis or assessment of the article, and you ended with conclusions. So it's a similar uh, way of writing paragraphs or essay. We have the IBC format or the introduction body and conclusions format of the paper. So you have to follow the same in writing critical response 
papers. Next, we have the position paper. So, position paper this time presents your claim or position on such uh, issues in the society like the reproductive health bill, divorce, same-sex marriage. So, position paper about the uh, uh, candidacy of uh, somebody in the national polls. Okay? So, we have... Of course, the IBC format, as I've mentioned a while ago. So we have to begin our paper with an introduction. It's an overview which presents facts or claims about the issue that you are to discuss. Next, followed by the body. So the body may consist of three statements. Uh, three paragraphs in the body to discuss your claim or position. Discuss the arguments, okay? What you are, what is your stand about such issues in uh, the society? And finally, end your position paper with a summary. Evaluate the ideas that you have discussed and connect it with the introduction or the point or the thesis statement. We call it thesis statement of the paper or the heart, the main point of your paper in the conclusion part of your position paper. So, we have also, we call project proposal. And project proposals are uh, being done by students like you as well as done by professionals, okay? It is a written document expressing a solution or whole plan of your project in order to address a particular, okay, problem. Okay, so it's a project proposal. For example, the problem of water pollution in your area. So you have to talk about it. You have to talk and propose a project or a solution about uh, the problem in your areas. So we, con uh, we write the project proposals uh, using the following parts. So we have to address the problem, the objective, and the needs we have in... Uh, preparing the whole plan of uh, the project. So in comparison with the position paper, the position paper is uh, a writing about your claims or about your uh, stand about a certain issue. Okay, while the project proposal is here, you are trying to express your solution about the issue or the problem, okay? And we have the following parts. Problem, objective, and need. Okay, for example, we have the sample project proposal. Okay, improper use of electricity has been a major uh, factor in fire accident that results to tremendous losses of lives and properties. So this is... The problem. And in writing the problem class, you know what? You have to base it on facts, on scenarios, on real events, and include citations. It's like writing the introduction or the background of the study of a research paper. It's the same. It's the same way we write the project proposal. We have to introduce to the writers or to the audience, to our readers, to our panelists as well as to the public wherein we, we are proposing the project, the phenomenon, the situation of uh, the problem. Okay? Along with that are citations to support your claims. Okay? This is an example of a problem in a project proposal. Improper use of electricity. Alright, how do we write different texts? Uh, this time, literature review, very useful in your uh, researches, okay? So, literature review this time is a synthesis of existing studies, theories, and published works that are related to and would provide support in your present research, all right? So this is uh, what you're doing in your research proposals for practical research one. 
Okay, you are to write literature reviews. And we have the following guide questions. Okay, uh, it's a gathering. It's an integration of all published works that may support your study. Okay, support your present research. It's a review of related literature, or we call it literature review. So we have the following. What is the topic all about? What is your topic statement? What is your statement of the problem? So you begin with this uh, statements, asking or answering the guide questions. What studies have been done on the topic? So this time, in the second question, you are to gather literature around the world. When I say literature, it's not the works of the great works of Shakespeare or anything else. I'm referring literature to studies published that may support your research study. Okay? What do the experts say about the ideas or theories uh, about your topic? Okay? So you have to uh, express this through a paragraph format of writing. Okay? What do these related studies, ideas, or theories contribute to your present study, topic, or project? So this same. You have to gather, collect this literature, integrate them all together, synthesize them, and make sure that you align them with the present study, with your research study. Okay? This is literature review. The previous ones are uh, we call project proposals, we have the critic paper, critic response paper, and uh, we also have, let's go back, the position paper. Okay, and finally we have the literature review. So these are the different texts across disciplines, meaning regardless if you are going to make, become medical professional someday or you're to become educators, uh, psychologists, you're to become health professionals. We have this text across disciplines. We are to write this in the future, most especially if you become professionals. So how do we organize our literature review? So we have the following styles. Number one is the thematic styles. Okay, uh, thematic styles, meaning these are based on themes or ideas of uh, your literature. Example, procrastination is an effective way for students to get the work done. The themes uh, to research or write about may be the following. Procrastination in general or as a phenomenon. Next, number two, outline. Okay, pros and cons of procrastination. And number three, analytical comment on the ideas that uh, may contribute to your present research. So it's a thematic style, meaning you'll base it on themes or ideas. Outline your literature review based on the ideas presented about the topic. Let's say procrastination. Second uh, theme will be the pros and cons of procrastination. And finally, uh, a comment, your analysis about the ideas that uh, the article or group of articles contributed to your uh, present research. <coughs> All right. And uh, when we say uh, we write academic texts, of course, we use citation styles. One moment. <coughs> And uh, we have different citation styles aside from uh, the ones I will present, APA and MLA. Okay. <coughs> so American Psychological Association style is for the social sciences. Remember, we have the different social sciences or branches of social sciences. And we use citation styles. Uh, in a standard of American psychological association. And of course, we have the Modern Language Association. If in case you are into the field of language, culture, humanities, and media, we'll use MLA as the 
uh, citation styles or referencing styles, okay? And uh, in-text citations. I know that you are uh, familiar with an in-text citation of what is an in-text citation and references, but we'll get to this uh, further, okay? In APA or American Psychological Association style, we have the format A. Okay, if used at the end of the sentence, always see to it that you include the citation in the sentence, meaning the period is at the end. Okay, we only use the author's family name and the year published, such as this. Learning is a way of life rather than a period of life. Lucero, comma, 2016, in uh, open and closed parentheses period meaning we include the citations on the uh, sentence okay that's an in-text citations and citations class is important for us to uh, attribute the source to the author to avoid plagiarism and to support our ideas we need citations all right next Another format for APA are citations in the beginning and the middle of the sentence, like this. Lucero 2016 said that, comma, learning is a way of life rather than a period of life. Or, we have the following. According to Lucero 2016, learning is a way of life rather than a period of life. Copy. So these are different forms on how to cite the text. We only need a family name and the year published. Okay, uh, on different sites we have, and make sure that your sites are reliable. So we have the MLA, a Modern Language Association style. We use it uh, this way. Okay, Lucero 26. It's page number this time, replacing the year. So it's quite a different from the APA style. But you know what class I prefer? I always prefer the APA style for social sciences. And we are using that in our school. So instead of using the page number, write the year published. Okay, but this time we have the MLA format. Okay, next. And another format for the MLA, if used at the end of the sentence and uh, in the beginning of the sentence. Uh, have you seen the comparison or have you noticed the comparison? So, use APA, alright? Uh, most especially in your research, we use APA style. And uh, our second part is writing professional correspondence. And this time class, this is the purpose or the main point and your main output for your, <clears throat> for your major performance tasks for the fourth quarter, which includes writing the cover letter and resume. For your future job applications I know that you are excited for a job but you have to take note that in applying for a job you have to prepare some documents and in the way you present these documents may impact your application okay we have the cover letter and resume so this time our objectives are the following Number one, identify the unique features of and requirements in composing professional correspondence. When we say cor professional correspondence, it's uh, writing cover letters and resume. Next, apply the concepts of correct format and content in composing application letter and resume. And finally, class, for your outputs, for your major performance tasks, you are to draft, proofread, and revise your resume and application letter. Are you ready? This is what I'm excited about uh, teaching students. I'm not into knowledge, but I hope that I can teach you life skills here, writing skills to help you become job ready in the future. So this time, we are to write the resume and application letter. Excited. So these are the standards part of a letter class. As uh, This is a review because I know that 
you have encountered how to write a letter before during your junior high school years. So we have the letterhead, date line, inside address, salutation or opening, body or the message, complementary close or ending, and the signature line or the block. All right. <clears throat> For example, of the letterhead, the letterhead may consist of the following. It's on the topmost uh, of your letter. So it, it may include the following, company's name, logo, contact information, and address. So it's on top. Next, we have the date line. For example, it's a complete date. April 26, 2020, 2022, like that. So the inside address class refers to the following. Okay, it's a title of the addressee. You will be given such as uh, the following, Miss, Doctor, always see to it that you correctly address the person. Okay? Example, name of the address, position, company name, affiliation, company address, and zip code. Like this one. Miss Sarali A. Yolate, Managing Editor, Banat Newsletter, McKinley Street, Silai City. So this is a complete inside address. And you know what, class? Inside address is an important part of the paper or the letter. Why? Because if we do not know to whom the letter is addressed, then it's for no purpose, okay? So you have to write the address of your letter in the inside address. Next, we have the salutation or the opening. With the word dear followed by the title or the family name of the receiver. And a colon is placed in the family name, not semicolon, not uh, anything else but a colon. Why colon, sir, not comma? Because this is academic writing, this is professional writing, this is writing for professional correspondence. So it's better to put colon. Okay? Dear Mr. Mrs. Ma'am Bernales, colon. Okay, not semicolon. Some of you class are writing the salutation with a semicolon at the end. That's a no-no. That's wrong. Okay? So, write the salutation correctly. Next is the body. And uh, the body class discuss uh, what you are trying to express or what's the purpose of writing your letter. This is the content or the message, okay? And you discuss it in the body section. For example, I am expressing my interest in the position of ESL instructor which you have advertised in Philippine Daily Inquiry. Take note that you have to begin with uh, greetings. Greetings, I am expressing my interest. So you have to uh, directly express your intent in writing the letter. Uh, take note. You have to detail as well, where did you get the information? So, this time, the writer or the applicant get information in Philippine Daily Inquiry. I have my academic background combined with competencies that will enable me to become an effective uh, or an asset in your company. So, this is an example of a body and how you write application letters. So, I will give you more examples, of course. We have the complementary close. This, uh, this part signals that the letter is officially close. You may say, yours truly, respectfully yours, best regards. And my favorite, my mother's favorite as well is, sincerely yours, kama. So this is a sign that your letter is officially closed. So, you have the signature block. Always see to it, class, that when applying for a position, see to it that your cover letter is always with your signature, official signature, such as uh, this one, for example. Okay? Copy. Okay, let's proceed. 
So we have the different styles for uh, business letters. Okay, we have the full black letter uh, letter style and the modified letter styles. So for the full black, we have the following. When you say full black, it's uh, always uh, justified all left aligned, uh, justified all on the left, like this one. And uh, another example is this. Okay, modified letter style. As you can see, for the modified letter style, the letter head is on top. Okay, well, some we do not have this. Okay, uh, in some professional letters, we do not have the uh, letter head. So, for your applications, you may begin. Okay, you may begin with the date and down to your names or uh, your signature. So follow the full black style in writing and uh, you may, yes, you may omit this part, okay? Omit this part, you may begin with the date and then the inside address, go on with the opening, with the contents or the body, complementary close, and then signature. And we have the semi-block letter style and the simplified letter styles. So, for the simplified letter styles, no indentions. And yet, the uh, complementary close in the uh, signature is on the right portion. Okay, while here, in the semi-block, it's with indentions. And then, uh, the uh, uh, close complementary close in the signature is also on the uh, right side. So, for your applications, you need to follow the full black style like this, and you may omit, uh, omit the letterhead. Okay, uh, I will provide you examples, specific examples for your uh, major performance task for the fourth quarter. And we have the following. Okay, spacing. Three spaces, three spaces, one space, one space. Uh, see to it that uh, the, your uh, space, uh, the spacing of your uh, letter complements with the purpose as well as uh, the uh, face value of your uh, application. So aside from the cover letter or the application letter, you need the resume. We're in uh, the resume will include the brief uh, backgrounds of all your educational work experience and uh, professional and uh, civic affiliations. So we have the following contents, heading, skills, educational background, seminars, workshops and training attended, achievement, honored, honors, and organizational organizational affiliations and finally end with a, a references so we have the following example the skills and qualifications educational background seminars achievement and uh, character references and always provide uh, your uh, recent photo two by two recent photo in your resume right okay so uh, observe the examples that we have here okay it's a nice uh, example of how to write a resume or how to compose resume for your uh, future applications so the purpose of application letter is uh, for employees to uh, detail or to know about your uh, background. This provides additional information about your skills and experience. Uh, it's a detailed information of answering the question why you're qualified for the job. Just answer it. Okay? And uh, I will show you an example of my uh, recent 
application letter. Of course, you need to learn from the best. I will share it with you. You may follow it. Okay. Next, we have other forms of office correspondences like text message. In writing text messages, no shortcuts. We have electronic email. Okay, electronic emails, I'm receiving emails every day. We have memorandum. We have minutes of the meeting written by uh, the secretary. Letter of inquiry, letter of reply, letter of complaint, and finally the resignation letter. So these are other forms of office correspondence, professional correspondence that you have to know about. Okay? But the most important of all is the uh, letters for professional correspondence with regards to your job application in the near future. So I have to teach you how to write application letter, how to write a resume, right? So if you have, if you got any questions, don't hesitate to uh, chat on the Microsoft Teams and uh, to email me as well of your concerns, your queries about how to write properly. And of course, we cannot absorb everything in just one sitting and in just uh, one session class. So you have to go extra mile by, okay, by uh, browsing the web about how to effectively write resumes and uh, job application letters. I'm doing the same thing as well. So avoid cliches, jargons, and slangs in writing class. This is a no-no in academic and professional writing, such as at the speed of light. You know what I mean? To be honest, a wall or away without official leave in loop for updates, code red for emergency, major major for very important, poker face for a uh, blank explanation, no split for difficulty in speaking English, no class, please do avoid cliches, jargons, and slangs. These are ineffective in academic and professional writing. Alright? Next, avoid fillers. When I say fillers, it was Allen and Aldrin who were honored. Instead, use Allen and Aldrin were honored. There comes a time when I feel like giving up on the team. Time comes when I feel giving up on this team. So avoid fillers class. Okay? It's ineffective. Next. Avoid outdated questions. Outdated questions, you know, irrelevant questions about the uh, about the systems of how the facilities will work or the operations. Instead, uh, use instead of utilize, send instead of transmit, working instead of operational. So simple words, okay? To uh, simple yet powerful words to impact your uh, emails, to impact your writing. Avoid redundant words, okay? Redundant words are unnecessary in professional and academic writing. And here are, finally, I'd like to end with the six C's, six C's of effective communication. And number one, courtesy. Use positive words in, uh, in starting your emails, your letters, and your correspondences. Clarity. Okay. In terms of clarity, always remember the KISS acronym. KISS acronyms, keep it short and simple. Okay, you keep it short and uh, simple. Conciseness, brief but complete. Concreteness, specific and not ambiguous. Correctness, of course, you have to grammat uh, grammatically uh, correct all the sentences and completeness. Answer the WH questions, what, when, where, who, why, and the how in your letters and professional correspondences. So thank you so much. If you got questions, don't hesitate to contact me on Microsoft Teams chats. I need you.
to communicate with me always in order for us to learn further in our subject, reading and writing. Thank you so much. This has been Sir Robert. See you next week.